This is Dumb Down Life number 35.
that was Maximum Angel and Moss Eisley. Not one of your best choices there, Lance. Yeah, I have to say, I do agree with you. <laughs> As I was saying to you yeah. offline, the, um, the downside of downloading a shitload of music means I sometimes download a load of shit music. <laughs> <laughs> Tempted by the title you were. <laughs> Um, yeah. Just because it's got something mentioned in Star Wars doesn't mean it's going to be any good. Which brings me nicely on to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what the... I've, I've been, as most of you know, um, that listen, I have been away for the past two weeks out in the US. And um, I don't know what it's been like over here, but there has been an excessive amount of promotion for the latest Star Wars film. Is that... The same over here, Lance? There's been a fair amount, but I wouldn't exactly go and say it's been hyped. It's mm -hmm. There's quite a few magazine covers with um, very different characters on each of the covers. You know, these magazines where they do same magazine, but different covers to see which one's preferable and all that yeah. sort of thing. Um, make them collector's items. Like, and all that. Um, there's been those. Empire there's been, Magazine. That's the sort of thing. Well, there's, there's different TV magazines out there that have done that. They've put DVDs of um, outtakes and whatever on the front. There's been some television um, promotion about it. And it was quite quite hyped out there, but I just didn't get the chance to see it while I was there. So I um, came back to, and um, thought today, you know, if I've got a spare change in my pocket, then I shall go see it. And I did, so I did. Um, right. Well, where do I start? The, the 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 first strange thing is that it's not done by Fox. So it's a Star Wars film that doesn't start with the searchlights and what we know is the introduction to Star Wars. The any twentieth any twentieth century Fox film that you see that starts with the drums and the you think it's gonna be Star Wars yeah. and, it, and it generally isn't. Um but this one doesn't you get the, the big Warner Brothers logo with um, a bunch of um, battle chatter in the background, and then you get Clone Wars as opposed to Star Wars and Clone Wars music as opposed to the John Williams fantastic piece of music that we've all grown up with. Once the Clone Wars logo... I'm not going to go through the whole thing, by the way. Once the Clone <laughs> Wars logo has disappeared, you don't get the scrolling, disappearing text. You get a newsreel-style introduction with American voiceover man explaining about the war, and it's just not... It's not a film. It's not Star uh, Wars, by the sound of it. It is Star Wars, but it's Star Wars... I was going to say in as much as the games are Star Wars, but even the games start off with the the scrolling text and, and all that sort of thing. Um, it's Star Wars, but it's not a film. Right. It started off as um, a television... Um, started off as a television series but then Mr. Lucas in his infinite wisdom looked at all the work that had gone into this looked at it on a big um, TV said well let's have a look at this on a big you know projection screen cinema looked at it and said you know this is good enough we can put this out in the cinema somebody should have sort of tapped him on the shoulder and said no nah. because <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I kind of agree with you what I'd heard I haven't seen it yet but what I'd heard was that it was initially going to be an hour's pilot for the new yep. um, Clone Wars cartoon that's coming out. I think it's on Nickelodeon, isn't it? Um, and then they'd got up to the hour and he decided that, yeah, we'll make it an hour and a half and make it into a movie. Yeah. It's probably um, should have left really it at the hour. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that it is a promotion for the cartoon. Um, I, I don't know whether the cartoon is being made anymore. I think that all the work that was done with the cartoon ended up being made into the movie. Um, I believe there is a real action Star Wars, no, real actors 
Star Wars television program coming out now instead. Um, but the need of the research on that, I'm not 100% certain with from that. What I, <clears throat> excuse me, from what I understand, the cartoon's still going ahead. <clears throat> and then he's going to do the live action one. Okay. Well, did you watch the 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 other Samurai Jack style um, cartoon Star Wars? No. You didn't even see that? Okay. No. The, the thing it. is, if we were watching this... No, I'm not, I'm not even going to say if we were watching this between two and three. You can take this film, throw it away, and you don't miss anything. It's quite clearly something that's written between the films um, it doesn't add anything to the storyline it doesn't explain anything that was missing it's just a filler it's something like um, I, I'm, I'm not disrespecting the people who write these books but it's it, it's like that the fan fiction that's written it's just something that's cleverly written to fit be, between the timelines that we know um, but it can be taken or, or left um, doesn't really warrant being on the big screen I wouldn't even say get it on DVD I would say wait until it comes out on television um, at Christmas this year more than likely <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> um, it, it wasn't particularly wonderful it did <coughs> leave me wanting to um, play um, the, the online game again because you get certain scenes of certain iconic Star Wars places such as Jabba's Palace and you think oh, that's great and the graphics are fantastic and the actual characters themselves wonderful and they could remake the entire six Star Wars films in that style and it would be fantastic the battles were great the, the characters were good but as a story just didn't deserve to be one that was put into film um so it's a bit of a bit of a letdown really is, is it time for george just to let things lie do you think mm, film wise film wise yes um you, you start to get into a lot of trouble if you go too far into this i mean um we <laughs> There's a few extra lightsaber-wielding bad guys. And they don't explain about whether this guy is a Sith or whether he's not a Sith or how come this is Dooku's apprentice when I thought that Dooku was the Emperor's apprentice. And there can only be two. There can only be two. Unless, and then if George is going to throw in some of his wonderful well yes there can only be two unless and it's like no 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 george shut up <laughs> don't go down there there can be only two and that's it <laughs> not two unless we don't want to go down the whole medichlorine thing. No. <laughs> Just, uh. i was waiting until you mentioned that <laughs> it, yeah certain things just if you're going to say there can be only two, there can be only two. Now, I know that in the games, they went down the whole track of having more than two. They had but um, dark... They dark weren't Jedi, Sith, I they think. Were dark they were dark Jedi, weren't they? Yeah, and, and they, they had force-sensitive people, people and all this sort of thing, yeah. So it's a force-sensitive bad person. And not a okay, Sith. Okay, uh, not a Sith. I mean, yeah. they, they did that in the game, so you had the option... Of, of being a Jedi and being bad or sorry being a force user and having a, a lightsaber and that and being evil being part yeah. of the Empire um, to balance the game otherwise all the Jedis within the, the, the online good. game would have been good guys yeah. um, so they had to do that as sort of a, a, a game balance thing yep. Yep. As, now, as the game isn't canon to the, the sort of Star Wars universe then they can get away with that but to put yeah. it into a movie and that, then you're kind of stretching the credibility of there can be only be two. Yeah. I keep wanting to well, say there can be only one, but that's a completely different <laughs> set of films. <laughs> Another film that they stretched beyond the one which they should have never done. They should have only been one. The most should have only been should one, have film. Only been one yeah. film. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, as to whether the whole Star Wars thing is, is done, no. Um, I very much like the... Um, 
the stories of the Clone Wars that are unrelated to the main characters um, following the development of the the clones and how they um, they are better than machines because they are able to think for themselves but then they haven't considered what that actually means if they can think for themselves then they become individuals one of the things that I did like in this film was the fact that when the um, clone troopers took their helmets off some of them had mohawks some of them had double mohawks they had different coloured hair because they wanted to be individuals oh right and, and that kind of thing was that, that was nice I like that and I like the way they explored that because being a clone doesn't mean that you're um, a ro Identic ro robotic and, and non-sentient or whatever. Absolutely. You're just genetically the same. Yep. But but even, you know, you can almost say they're twins, can't you? Yeah. Um, and uh, twins strive for individuality, so why wouldn't a clone? Why wouldn't clones? Absolutely. So was it um, worth being a film? No. Is the Star Wars franchise something they should give up on? Absolutely not but they need to look at a different way of, of doing this. Um, well, I do believe that the the live-action series that he's going to make is going to be set in a similar sort of period and yeah. going, to, going to do the same sort of thing in that it's going to fill in um, minor characters' backstories and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I suspect strongly... That the live action thing is going to have Boba Fett as one of the main characters. Well, yeah, because that that's one character that we see um, we see him when his dad's head gets chopped off, and then the next time we see him is when he um, meets up with Vader, um, and they're looking to to capture to Luke in um, in the Empire Strikes Back. So there's there's a big story there that can be um, filled out. That's I mean, there's no is. real mysteries in there, but you you could fill out that with uh, with some quite interesting stories that, that's where my money is on for the the live action i think that's what it what it will do yeah it's going to be boba fett's yeah. story yep but. and yeah but but i would wait until it comes out on tv not a not a move not worth going to see on the movies i'm afraid nah, it's quite disappointing because i was looking forward to going to see it <laughs> <laughs>
Do you know, I must have picked the two longest songs in the entire catalogue to play today. <laughs> I do have to say, Lance, that the whole idea of bringing in anything that's rock and, and it isn't working. I, I have not liked either of the tracks that you've played today, and I think we should go back to being a little bit more selective. Fair enough. I just... um, it, it, it's something we had to try, and it's worked well in the past, but just those two that have come up today. And... Um, what, what's concerning me is the fact that when we send these messages to these people saying, we played your track, and as we've now had a couple of bits of feedback from various artists, they're going to go listen to our podcast and go, why did they play our music if they don't like it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, sorry, guys. <laughs> not not a fan. No. Um, yeah, what I, what I should do... Basically, what I've been doing is um, any new tracks that fall within the... Uh, the genres that I like um, that appear on the Podsafe Music Network I've been downloading them um, and then just letting my recording setup select the music from all the all the tracks that I've got because I've now got over a thousand songs mm. um, yeah I think I need to uh, vet them a little bit before we actually play them if anything, put them into some kind of a list on your iPod and then listen to them and then pick the best ones from that genre um, because I think very quickly you'll be able to sort of listen to the first few bars of it and say, nah, and put a one star next to it and know not to use it for the show. But, yeah, I'll, um, I'm going to have to do something, but I just thought it was something worth trying. Yes. Um, possibly mainly because it... I'm lazy and it saves me listening to the tracks as they're sitting there and you know but hey there you go that was um, for anybody who did like it that was Psycho Voyager and out <laughs> right um, we've talked a few times recently about um, Google's Street View we have we have and I have yet another Street View story um, Street View's gone live in Australia and so you can now view the streets in Australia on Google. I shall have to have a look. That's cool. Okay. Um, but going on the the privacy tip again, which everybody seems to be quite happy to bash Google for privacy violations at the moment, an Australian man who collapsed in a drunken stupor after drowning his sorrows over the death of a close friend is furious that he was captured on camera by Google. Uh, he basically his his um, one of his friends died. He went to the funeral and then went out on a massive bender. He got home and collapsed on his um, grass verge just in front of his house at round about the time that the Google streetcar went by. So when you uh, go to Google and have a look, you'll see this man stretched out, paralytic comatose on his front lawn and he's not happy about it <laughs> um i've kind of not not been not keeping up with the story now but um can you see his face have you looked at the pictures um i've got the website open at the moment um and oh, this is where it brings your machine to its knees <laughs> <laughs> yeah um no i can't actually see um from the story where i'm reading it from which is the daily mail online um, they don't have the picture. All they have is a picture of the Google car. Right. With, with the... Um, they were talking about technology for blurring faces and this sort of thing. Um, the fact that the guy is lying on the lawn would suggest that it's probably difficult to see his face anyway. Um, surely the only reason that we will know who he is is the very fact that he has complained about this and ended up getting in the news. Hmm. Um... <laughs> the reason for him being drunk is very sad, but when you get drunk, people see you drunk, um, whether they walked past him in the street or whether it's caught on satellite or whether it's caught by the Google camera. I don't think that's relevant, really. I mean, it's entirely possible that some teenagers could have walked by, seen him lying down, take a picture on their phone, take and it's picture. on Flickr. Yep. Absolutely. Um which he'd probably have less chance of it getting removed. It's, it's, you're in public. What you do in public is available to the public. Um, 
Sorry, dude. No, I, I don't think he's got <laughs> it well. Um, I, I've got to say, I do agree with you. If, you. if you're silly enough to collapse outside in public, then it's your, your own silly fault, really, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, although, like I say, although it's a very sad reason for why he got drunk in the first place, he still had the, the opportunity not to get drunk or um, to, to drink in moderation in his own house until he fell asleep. Um, but he's out in public. Had he gotten into a car and gotten into an accident and hurt somebody, uh, would he have said, oh, it's not fair, you know, I, I got I got drunk because of the, the loss of a dear friend and now the police are putting me in prison for being a drunk driver? Yeah. It, it's not relevant why he got drunk. No. Um it, it's sad but true. It does say that the um, it, Google have removed it now. Um, that, that's the other thing. Give Google a chance to, to remove it. Um, and then if they don't remove it, go to the press if you feel that way inclined. But um, I suspect that Google have got some kind of a policy whereby you can ask for things to be removed. Um, I noticed on the, the Google viewer that um, quite often you'll see an area that's very full of trees and if you look carefully it's all the same tree that's been copied and pasted several times to cover something now I haven't now, noticed that um, there's a, a there's a community in live journal that you can join where they um, they show you these sort of things um, and I noticed that one today where there's a an area that's quite barren and, and almost a desert but there's this nice little prairie of trees that seems to be covering something that um, either the government has asked them to cover up or for, for security reasons or safety reasons or but, privacy reasons. But the, Google ir have up. the irony of that being, if it's that sort of noticeable, then people are going to find out where it is and go and try and find out what they're hiding. <laughs> yeah, th th there's that. Um, but possibly when you go there, you'll see that there's just a bunch of barbed wire fence and keep out sort of information. But Yeah. Um, um, the there there was, there was another story here as well um, where one woman who wrote to um, Sydney newspaper she said um, that she logged on to see her own house uh, sorry, her parents' house on Street View and um, the, the picture has her parents standing out in the front garden um, and her dad had died since the picture was taken yeah it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so what? Again, if if that's upsetting to her, then ask the Google artists to um, <laughs> to blank him out. So it's just mum stood there in the front garden. I mean, that's that's almost worse, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, like you say, the 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 thing that's sort of annoying me with all of this is is how easy or the the. Um, the trend seems to be to bash Google, yeah, b uh, because of what they're doing. Um, but I, I get the impression that if you do actually sort of get in contact with them and say, "Look, I'm not happy. Can you remove this or, or blur this out or, or whatever?" They will do it. Yeah, I do have to say I'm still at a bit of a loss as to the use of the Street View. Yeah, um, to to sort of look at it from the opposite side. They, they seem to be investing a lot of money in this and a lot of money and time. Um, why? It's fun to go look at some of these street views, but they're because of the time it takes from taking the picture to, to going up, it's almost pointless trying to use it for advertising. Um, or is it? Um, they don't take... I mean, it can take a month or two for the photos to show up. But if you're a business... Um, you can and oh, what, is it Google Maps that you, they have their businesses there and you can do a search and find local yeah. businesses on well if you can then show them an actual picture of your building with how to get there using the street view then that's semi useful well the thing is that with the US a lot of these buildings are going to be within a, a lot of these companies are going to be within a mall, within a shopping mall. Which or, you only see the outside of. Which you see the outside of. So what? Um, you're not seeing the company logo, you're not seeing 
you're seeing the outside of it. Where, where's the advantage of that over just a regular map? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I've got to admit, I don't, I don't sort of get the... I'm, I'm interested in the whole thing. I'm interested in the technology. But from a, like with you, from a commercial point of view, I can't really see the use at the moment. I'm sure they've got something in mind. Yeah. Because Google, like, they wouldn't be investing this amount of money without any idea Otherwise. of what they're going to mm. do with it. So they must have some sort of plan. I'm almost worried now as to what the next song is going to be. How long is the next song? <laughs> uh, two minutes 57. Excellent. Play on. It's uh, Eureka Gold and Peter O. was better <laughs> bit of a sudden ending though wasn't it <laughs> sudden endings i can cope with there, there was a, a, an ending in a, a nice amount of time that was a good one. uh it sounded better i'll have to listen to it on the show again afterwards because i couldn't hear it that clearly but it certainly sounded a bit better than the uh, than the previous two tracks um the name of it peter o actually reminds me of um of a, of a garage that i saw that i saw saw while out in the states um, considering the, the area that I was in, it was kind of appropriate. Um, this is a place that sells tires, um, and it's a company called Big O Tires, which when said in an English accent doesn't sound right. But when it's Big O Tires... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you want some Big O Tires for that? <laughs> um, uh, it was quite an experience going out to the States this time because it's not going out there for sort of doing holiday stuff. It's going out there and, and um, I was asking about employment and things like that. And to be quite honest, this particular area that I was in, they're screaming out for people. And um, several companies and several stores that I was in um, had got signs in the windows looking for staff. And uh, I could have 
gotten a job sort of there and then had I got the right paperwork. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, at one point, because Barbara's got this, um, have you seen the, the picture of the uh, the four by four that we've got down there at the minute? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Barbara's got this, and um, it she has to use it every day. There's absolutely no question about it. To get to work, um, even to get to the stores, that um, she has to has tra- have has to have transportation. And um, she's let what she d- doesn't know because these tires are so big on this thing. Um, getting the pressure right is a bit difficult and they look soft uh, when you test it there is actually quite a high pressure in them it just they, they look soft but I did notice that one of the tyres was going down and seemed to be lower than the others so I took it into the, um, one of these places and they, they checked the, they, they took the tyre off the rim and um, found a, a nail in it and um, fixed it and all was well and happy but I was interested in the customer service that you get while you're out in the states now customer service in some in the uk is something that we've kind of forgotten i think totally yeah absolutely um and and the british tend to have a bit of a oh well never mind kind of an attitude to it you know you go into a shop you get poor service and you say well you know what are you going to do and and we don't worry about it now in the states they have a much better level of customer service, but then the customers seem to have a much higher expectation. So they're equally as upset about the, the poor service that they're getting. I'm thinking, what? Poor service? I went into the, um, the, the, the tire place and the guy at the desk said, well, it's going to take 45 minutes. If you want me to take your mobile number, I'll give you a call when it's ready and you can come back. Meanwhile, you can wander the store. It covers like several hectares of space so you'll be out there and happy for a while we'll call you on your mobile you come back and you get your cars all done and i was like well that's that's a nice idea um rather than sort of keep going backwards and forwards and you know (coughs) having them tell you that it's still not ready it gives you a a bit of freedom yeah nice idea yeah um but there was these two old gentlemen in front of me and um once the uh the sales clerk had had left they're like well, he says it's four to five minutes, but we've been here for two hours now, and I used to work in the automotive industry, and I know it don't take two hours to change no tire, and uh, <laughs> this is appalling, and what, you give me your mobile number. Oh, I don't want to wander around their store for two hours waiting for them to change my tire. Oh, I should have done this myself. It would have saved me some money. And we're watching out the window, and this guy's truck pulls in while he's complaining, and... Um, a girl, I say girl, probably in her sort of mid-twenties, um, puts the car up on the jacks, and he says, oh, no, look, they've even got a woman doing it now. <laughs> and uh, couldn't resist myself. I said, uh, yeah, apparently they've got the vote as well. <laughs> Neither of these guys said a word after that. <laughs> it just totally surprised me how sexism was just like you know they got a woman doing it I couldn't imagine you know, had it been an African American oh my <laughs> goodness <laughs> there would have been an outbreak there would have been a lynching <laughs> but they were complaining about the fact that it was a woman doing it they were complaining about the fact that these guys had gone on a break uh, oh if he was working out in the field on a combine harvester he wouldn't be able to take a break and it's like but he's not. He's working in a garage. He's working in a garage. You know, he's working for minimum wage. Um, if you really were that upset about it and you know so much about this whole business, then yeah, you should have changed the tire yourself. Yeah. Um, you stupid man. But uh, yeah, that was... Uh, I've not seen that kind of response from people in such a long time that it was it was a quite a shock to to know that that kind of thing still went on to be honest um and speaking to some of the 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 people while out there um there's there's still a lot of problems with 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 that with ageism with sexism with racism um and with people being so devout in their religion whatever it may be that they're also against 
you know, the fact that the stores are open on a Sunday and all this sort of thing. Um, and it, it's it's weird to see this sort of behaviour. But um, I, I'd, I'd be interested to see the um, experiences that um, that Doug's come across. Well, I mean, I'm going over in November. Oh, November now, is it? Yeah. I thought it was going in September. No, it's it's been pushed back because, um, A, I haven't got my passport sorted out yet, mm. and B... Um, Doug and his wife Bobby, they book a log cabin in the mountains in November. Oh, nice. And they do that. I think I've done that the last two years that Doug's been over there. And they decided that it'd be good if I came over in November and went with them. Yeah, so nice. I'll, get, I'll get two or three days up in the mountains as well as seeing them. So it's now November. But I'm I'm quite looking forward to going to see if I can spot any of these sort of differences because yeah. he sort of lives in... I mean, he says it's the deep south. Um, it's it's um, northern Car- North Carolina. Yeah. Which is... It is south, but I, I always think of, like, um, New Orleans and that being the deep south. Yeah, yeah. Because um, it, it's it's north of Florida, put it that way. Um, well, but, but it, we is, were in... it is sort of redneck country that he calls it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we were in what's what's called the the midwest um but again that's that's redneck country i think there's like a a redneck belt around the middle um and and if if you're not in the coast not on either the west or the east coast you're a redneck (laughs) well i heard it mentioned today um they they were calling them the flyover states because normally you come into the the east coast or you fly over them to go to the west coast (laughs) you don't normally land in the middle um (laughs) So that was, yeah, the, the flyover states. I like that one. But, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because these people, they're kind of cut off and therefore their opinions and so forth change a lot slower than um, than they have done in the in the cities and the, and the busier areas. It kind of, kind of makes me think of um, 1970s Stephen King. Okay. Um Kind of like um, Christine. Have you ever read or seen? Uh, no, I've not read, but I've seen it. I think, yeah. That it's all sort of like a little backwards town, and yeah, it's kind well, of st- st- um, it's not changed in like fifty years, you know. Yeah, well, um, sort of tying into a post that I made on the uh, on the, the website earlier today. Um, GPS actually took me down a backwater road. Um, when going down to to Barbara's place and I drove past the stereotypical old farmhouse that's got the 1950s rusty cars in the the front and it's got the two old guys on rocking chairs on their front porch with shotguns Um, (laughs) and it was like this 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 is from the 70s or the 60s (laughs) Um, it's it's all your horror movies rolled into one because you're, you're driving down this road in a um, a rental car with GPS telling you where to go, thinking that you're going to end up on some private estate somewhere where they've got a um, a human hunt going on, you know, <laughs> shoot the tourists sort of thing. And you start hearing the dueling banjos. That's it. Yeah, oh, that t- wouldn't have surprised me if I'd have seen that. <laughs> And you, you get these sort of funny looks and so forth as you're driving down this dirt road in your little, well, not, something not much bigger than a Ford Escort. Um, and it was amazing how a week later, driving down that self-same road with the 4x4, with my baseball cap on and a farmer's tan, you know, the bright red arms and you know, white face and neck, um, they, they tip the hats and they sort of recognise you as being locals. <laughs> <laughs> You're not from around here, are you, boy? Uh, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) Excuse me, could you tell me where I can get a cappuccino? (laughs) Do you have wireless? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't have the internet for two weeks. Otherwise, I'd have um, tried to phone in or or join in with one of the other recordings. But, uh, no, um, to get uh, internet out there, I'm going to have to have satellite. Oh, really? Yeah, which is quite expensive. So it's not something that's going to be high on the priority when I do get out there, to be honest. Oh, bugger. How are you going to cope? <laughs> um, 
I was I was thinking about this and see the first few days I was kind of itching to to blog about things and to to research things on the interwebs and but then when it came down to it it was quite interesting that to find out stuff about Kara's school before I could sign her up to the school I had to go visit the school <laughs> and in visiting the school you kind of get to meet people and talking to people and it was it ended up being quite nice to be away from the computer for those for that time um, and to not have a cell phone and to be disconnected if you're driving somewhere guess what people aren't going to be able to phone you <laughs> it's a, great uh, and so it was it was kind of like a step back in time again um and it reminded me as to what what we used to do before the internet it was quite nice hmm. i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we will have it eventually but i'm not sure that it's going to get the priority that i thought it would yeah um i, I thought it would be down there and it's like the first thing is okay make sure we get the internet set up don't know um May end up that may end up being sort of a, a dial-up connection for email only sort of thing. I don't know yet. Oh blimey! One of the things we've got to sort out. Do you get um, a decent cell phone reception there? A decent cell phone coverage, but um, I can't understand all the different plans out there yet. Um, the last time we went out there, we we bought um, pay-as-you-go mobiles to use while we were down there, and you actually had to pay to receive calls as well as paying to make them. So you're basically paying for, in sort of computer terms, you're paying for bandwidth either way. Exactly. And so when you, when you get a phone call, you're sort of deciding whether to answer it or not on whether you want to spend money on talking to this person. <laughs> and it, <laughs> I didn't really like that. No. Um, and also the, the money um, had an expiry date on it. So it would it would last for just a week. So you put ten dollars on your phone, and it lasts for a week. And it's like, um, maybe they're going to end up doing the same sort of systems as ours. Maybe this the infrastructure out there won't support the same sort of systems as ours. But um, we'll have to see how that works out as well. Well, just the reason why I asked is because um, something that's sort of taking off over here at the minute is. Um, uh, mobile phone dongles to go into your computer using the yeah. 3G network. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah. my sister's just done it. and She now doesn't have a house phone. She has a mobile phone with a contract on it. And that part of that contract gives her a, 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 a 3G dongle to go into her computer. And she's allowed up to three gigs worth of bandwidth a month. See, there's a the problem with me is I have no idea how much I use per month. Um, um, well, if it's anything like me, I'm pretty sure that you'd use more than three gig. Well, I don't know, because I'm not downloading every song from the podcast net music network every day. <laughs> um, no, but you do use YouTube quite a bit. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I won't be when I get down there, though. No. I'm pretty certain I won't be. But, I mean, that, uh, that might be an option for you. Yeah, true. Because it is true. It's a USB dongle, so you could use it on a desktop machine. Yeah, desktop uh, machine or a laptop or anything. Yeah. yeah. But uh, these are the same things that I need to sort out, and will be uh, interesting to find out where we go. Yeah. Right. Contact details, sir. Yeah, that's why I stopped because I'm trying to find them and my computer's gone slow again. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> if you want to call us, the telephone number is 07092 274 759. Uh, you can email us at ddl.podshow at googlemail.com. The website address is www.dumbdownlife.com, and that is now up to date. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, and you can follow us on Twitter. Our username is Dumbed Down Life. Yeah, what was the deal with the website? I mean, I looked. I did get a chance to sort of have a look at it when I stopped at a petrol station somewhere, and I looked at it and I thought, "Oh, they've only recorded one show." Um, so why didn't you update it? Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> 
It takes was, five minutes. Um, yeah, it was purely down to um, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let you off. <laughs> to, to be to be fair, I didn't do it on any of them. I I kind of we recorded the show. Um, I uploaded the show. I went to bed and then completely forgot all about doing the um, the other <laughs> the bits. Yeah. So, so the viewing figures on those other shows is going to be pretty low as well, is it? No, actually, they're as high as normal. So. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah. Ah, so there must be a few subscribers out there. I, I, Thank you very I much. Guess so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Right. Um, that's about it, really, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're probably going to be doing a show again on Thursday and um, getting back into the routine um, until the next person goes on holiday, I guess. Which, by all accounts, is probably going to be me. In November? Yeah. Oh, so we've got a few months yet then. Mm. But I will endeavour not to break my record. <laughs> because I'm going to see Doug, so I'll just make sure we're around on that day. <laughs> well, does Doug have broadband in this log cabin that might be an issue <laughs> yeah see yeah. that was what I was thinking I was thinking oh we'll go somewhere that's got the internet yeah and I just couldn't find anywhere I don't know to be honest alright well until Thursday then uh, I'll see you later bye ta -ra.